We've just had those numbers from ING. Let's go straight to Amsterdam and speak to Ralph Hamers, the CEO of ING. He joins us for his first interview of the day. Ralph, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on that beat on the third quarter underlying pre-tax. As I was just saying, though, uh, the big focus for the market is uh, how ING is to absorb that 775 million euro settlement uh, for the money laundering allegations by Dutch prosecutors. How did you absorb this fine in the third quarter? Well, uh, good morning. Um, clearly, you know, the, the, the fine marks this third quarter. And not only because of the fine and the size of the fine, just, just the settlement that has happened and the news that has come out. Uh, it clearly kind of is a shock to, uh, to some of our people and certainly also some of our clients. Uh, now, having said that, uh, for us in management, this was not new. This was nothing new that was coming per se. So we knew that there were uh, shortcomings in our processes. We didn't wait for the fine to come out. So the improvement process is around client onboarding, uh, client activity monitoring, all of those improvement processes we started already 18 months ago. And clearly, we will have to continue uh, those uh, going forward. Um, financially, we have absorbed them uh, this quarter. Uh, we took them uh, at once in, uh, in a special item, uh, as you can see in our net result of 776 million. Uh, but if you look at the underlying uh, development, uh, you actually see that the business itself, the franchise itself, is profiting from all the changes we've, ma uh, we've made, the transformations that we've gone through in the past, uh, with uh, additional primary customers coming on, 200,000, uh, with uh, NII increasing, with the NIM, the net in, in, uh, interest margin, just increasing a little bit as well. Cost under control, actually decreasing Q and Q, and that gives us a, a net of an uh, underlying uh, result of two billion one hundred and twenty-five uh, twenty-four million. Look, Ralph, everybody has got to get on uh, from, from misdemeanors of the past. Yours won't be the first or the last bank to have to deal with, with a tough time. So you take the bank forward. For shareholders, 775 million euros of a, of a fine, of a penalty. What does that mean for dividend? You say here the ING final dividend proposal for 2018 will be made at the year end. Is the dividend under threat? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, what we have indicated is that we are taking this, uh, this hit in the third quarter. Um, we have contributed the remaining of the net profit. We have reserved that for the uh, payout of the dividend. In the fourth quarter, we will uh, continue to reserve from the net profit then in order to pay our progressive dividend. Ralph, another fallout, of course, uh, from the money laundering allegations is that your CFO stepped down in September. How is the search progressing for a new CFO? Well, let me first say that uh, we regret uh, him stepping down uh, a lot. Uh, and, uh, but COS is still in, uh, in, in function. At this moment, we, uh, we are in the process of, uh, of hiring a new uh, CFO. Uh, you know that for a bank that has to go through many different approval processes and we're in the midst of that. In terms of the biggest risk is reputation risk, Ralph. What are you gonna do to rewrite that reputation? What action are you going to take to really sort of change the perspective of the bank? Yeah, so I think that's a very valid point here. Uh, reputation, confidence, customer confidence, uh, these are two core elements that a bank needs to have. Uh, clearly, we got a dent into our reputation. Uh, we'll have to work on that. The only way to work on that is just work hard, make sure that these things don't happen again, that you get your processes under control, that you improve your onboarding, improve your activity monitoring. Um, so it's a lot of hard work in order to, uh, to regain trust and confidence in society, from society as well as from your clients. And now having said that, as I have indicated in the third quarter, that we actually saw a continuation of, of new clients coming on board, in, on uh, primary clients coming on board, uh, which is a sign that, uh, yes, certainly there has been a, a, a hit on the reputational side. On the other side, our services, the way we look at how we... Uh, yep. how we uh, improve our customer experience, the net promoter scores, they're actually uh, all up 
uh, in most cases uh, in seven countries out of the 13 in which we're active. But it's a lot of hard work well. to get this back. Ralph, the cost income ratio, this is something that has concerned investors in the past, being above your target. Uh, the number you reported today coming in at 49.7%. Is this a material improvement and does this mean that the digital strategy and investment in that is working better now? There have been a lot of challenges. Well, if you look at 2018 as a, uh, as a year, we've always said that from the beginning when we announced our uh, transformation, that also 2018 was still going to be an investment year. But already in the third quarter now, you see that quarter on quarter, you see our costs coming down by just over 1.5%. And you see actually costs going down in areas like Belgium, where you know that uh, the transformation had the biggest impact. So we see FTEs coming down in Belgium more than uh, 1,150 uh, over that same period. Uh, we see the cost now actually really going down. So yes, we do see uh, some of these cost decreases. But as I said, you know, uh, there are still uh, quite some investments to go on the digital front. Uh, but uh, the, the trend that you see on the cost income ratio uh, is one that will continue. Uh, and we've always indicated that the 50-52% cost income ratio would be more on the back end of the horizon of our plan, which okay. is 2020. Ralph, what banks do is they lent money. You outperformed your peers uh, really up until recently. You were delivering, you were significantly above your peers, delivering 3 to 4% loan growth. That, it would appear, has stalled. Um, what is deliverable in terms of loan growth, the thing that you do to make money? Well, uh, actually, uh, we don't see the, uh, the loan growth coming down so quickly as, as you may uh, be uh, hinting at. In the first two quarters, we are actually far beyond the 3 to 4% guidance that we have given. Uh, in the third quarter, we see uh, a loan growth of 6.8 billion, which is still good loan growth. Uh, we see uh, a little bit more on the retail side this quarter, and less so on the wholesale banking side, whereas the first two quarters were characterized by rapid growth on the wholesale banking side. For us, loan growth itself is, is not the most important thing uh, on the income side. Uh, you know that we have a, a very strict discipline in the way we price uh, our, our mm -hmm. loans. And if we can't make it in one quarter in a specific sector or in a specific geography, uh, we can make it somewhere else. So you really have to look at loan okay. growth over a period of time, not necessarily on a quarter by quarter basis, but even this quarter, 6.8 billion in core lending growth, uh, we're, we're quite happy with that and it does, does support the NII.